uh, Danny, a warm welcome. So we're excited to have Danny speak here at our rapid fire fundraising tip session. Um, so this session is about 15, 20 minutes long. I'm super excited just because uh, in our rapid fire sessions, if you were here this morning, it's all about getting tips, hearing straight from nonprofits that are just like you, actively working small, medium-sized awards. So really excited to have another one of our longstanding customers, as well as uh, someone that we love working with over here. So Danny Despin. So Danny, who are you and how did you get here? Yeah, great question. Um, thanks, Rob, first of all, for having me. Um, super excited to share some some tips today. Um, I am Danny. I work for WellAware, a organization that is woman led, and it is an international nonprofit that um, funds and develops and maintains clean water systems in East Africa. Um, and so fundraising, especially, I mean, year round is very important, but year end is when we see the most of our of our donations. So I'm excited to share what we've done in the past. Um, I've been in marketing. I'm a newbie still. I will I will admit I've been in marketing for a little over four years now, um, but I love it and very passionate about this work and excited to share some tips today. Thanks, Danny. So Danny and I are both calling in from Austin, Texas, I believe. So uh, it's strange. So we love <laughs> we love Austin, Texas. I have lots of calls with Danny, but we never had met in person. <laughs> so, anyway, so Danny, first question is: Can you share a moment when a particular fundraising strategy really resonated with your audience, or year end, or for Giving Tuesday, uh, or even just in general? And how did it really change the way that your organization connects with your donors? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um... Most of our, you know, uh, fundraising campaigns that we do is solely towards clean water because that is our our main focus. Um, but at the end of 2023, we actually introduced a new initiative. Um, so now we are doing sanitation systems alongside our clean water projects because we see the impact just doubles whenever those both are present in communities. Um, and it kind of honestly just kind of happened to where it lined up perfectly to introduce that for our year end giving campaign. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying like start a brand new program just for year end giving. Um, but if there is something that is like coming up, um, it did make us a little bit nervous at first, I will say, because, you know, this was our first time introducing such a new initiative in our work. And we weren't exactly sure the feedback we were going to get. Um, of course, we got with a few of our, you know, constant supporters and we're like, what do y'all think? And everyone was super excited. Um, but it it turned out great, um, especially because it was something new. Um, you know, we always try to keep our our marketing and our messaging very lively and joyful. And like that's our brand voice. Um, but to just bring a whole new aspect of our work into this and kind of bring the our donor community like into it with us um, was a great way um, for our last year end campaign. Yeah, so it sounds like one of the aspects that really work in terms of fundraising strategy, and this is less about kind of channels and techniques, it's really about bringing a, a, another project or program of impact, and then that really helps inform the narrative or story that you're telling. So I'm kind of curious, like, was it difficult to really integrate additional programs into the fundraising story, or was it one cohesive story? Because I know a lot of organizations here in our audience, you know, they have a lot of different projects and programs. So I'm kind of curious, how do you really figure out how to tell something that's consistent, that's straightforward, that really resonates with donors? Yeah, I think um, specifically for our organization, it was very easy to kind of just add on this new program verbiage to our our current um, program, just because with clean water, you know, there's a lot that impacts health. And so because we're now providing toilet blocks and sinks for hand washing at schools, um, that just magnifies it. Um, we did have our own for like website things, um, we did have our own like a uh, landing page specifically for our year end campaign. And that really helped because, you know, if there are brand new people wanting to join in on this um, end of year fundraising campaign, they could get a little blurb about who we are, but then also they would figure out, you know, like what this campaign is going towards um, specifically with the sanitation program. Amazing. So I think it's really helpful to like, just have enough information on, on whatever page you're using, whatever site you're using, 
uh, with a with with kind of the different audiences in mind. So you have your existing donors who are who are being told that okay, our programs are expanding, and then for new donors, they have more information about okay, what is well aware and what do you all do. So I love that. Um, Absolutely, and um, if I can add on to what you just said, uh, it made me think. Uh, so for our recurring donors, um, we. There are lifeline, which I feel like they're most most nonprofits lifelines is the recurring donor program. Um, but another thing we do with our year end fundraising is we send out uh, new year calendars to our constant supporters, our biggest supporters, recurring all of those. We kind of, you know, we'll pull a list. And that is something that we might not get, you know, like a return on fundraising in right away. But by having, you know, a calendar with your impact pictures on each month for like the following year, any of your organization's important dates, like if there's a gala or if there's a, you know, peer to peer fundraiser, anything like that. And then also QR code codes on each on each month page, you know, so if a specific picture uh, touches a donor in a certain way that they have a very easy way to give, um, that's more stewardship than finding like new people in fundraising, but it really does help um, in the long term. Now, I think you're right. So, you know, a lot of times fundraising is not about just making the ask. It's about what do you do beforehand in order to get to an ask, right? So it is really interesting that you all have this calendar that you you give that is probably has like pictures of impact and then like stories and things like that. So donors can be reminded, okay, like this is this is how your donation matters and this is how you can support. So I'm kind of curious too, like with but some of the, the stewardship and engagement, donor engagement techniques that you, that you all use, like what's something that has really worked out well, that's really blown things out of the water, that kind of creates this really strong connection between donors and your organization? Yeah, so I, I caught the end of Julia's um, session, which I also am a huge fan of her. So I'm glad the audience is as well. Um, but where she said, um, be human, that is something that we also like really strive for. Um, our team is pretty small in our Austin office. We have seven people. Um, so, you know, bandwidth is important, of course. But um, one thing that we really like to do to keep our donors around is personal touches. Um, so, you know, not just a automated email that seems more personal than other ones that go out that's a mass email but like actual personal touches um we send uh thank you or we yeah we send thank you cards like in the mail to people whenever they first donate uh we send birthday cards in the mail to our recurring donors we send um we have little well aware onesies for babies so whenever one of our uh big supporters you know has a, has a baby we'll send that their way um just like big life events because it shows the humanity on on our side of the organization you know where everything is digitalized these days it's easy to donate somewhere and then it just kind of like it feels like it disappears into the mass of noise you know, online. And so whenever we are able to make these like personal human touches, it makes a world of difference. Uh, most of our recurring donors have been around since 2012 when the program first started because of that. And, you know, it is, it does take a little bit of more time, um, but it's so, so worth it. So, so do you do uh, kind of these personalized human touches for every donor or do you look at a segment of donors? Uh, to deploy some of those tactics out to? We have many segments. Um, so uh, our our big segments are usually, you know, donors above a certain, um, new donors above a certain giving range. Um, all of our village members, which that's what we call our recurring um, monthly donors, our village members. Um, and then just kind of, because our team is so small and we kind of all wear all of the hats, um, you know, if there's something that comes in, we'll do it case by case as well. But overall, we really want, you know, to keep new people around and also keep our, our existing donors because they've made all of this, you know, possible so far. Yeah. So I would assume you all have several um, thousands or tens of thousands of donors. So how do you keep up with sending the postcards and sending the thank yous? Is this something that uh, you all just do internally or do you kind of have some type of service you use that can help automate things? Yeah, we actually, we do it internally. Um, so, you know, depending on, for example, our our peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser that we do every year with Cosvax, well, we, 
this past year we did with Cosvox and next year, um, you know, we we keep track of all the donors and um, it's it, I will say it's a pretty manual process, but we will, you know, pull out people that donated over a certain amount and give them certain gratitude, whether it's a personalized email or personalized, you know, thank you card in the mail, um, as well as, you know, um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's already been a long day. Um, but yeah. So I'm curious. So we, we've been talking about uh, peer peer fundraising. We talked about kind of the donor nurturing and stewardship. But what are like the one or two things you're doing for year end and giving Tuesday around yeah. stewardship or even making an ask? I'm, like, I'm kind of curious. Like, how does that really fit in into making the ask this year end? Yeah. Um, so I will say that we have our annual gala every beginning of December. Um, so we really don't push too much on Giving Tuesday, I will say, um, because we're really focused on the gala and that year-end campaign. Also, bandwidth of the team. Um, we are now a two-person marketing team, but for a long time, it was a one-person marketing team. Um, and so, you know, you have to pick and choose the campaigns you can really put all, all of your eggs into. Um, but yeah, for stewardship, it's really important because the most, um, you know, the more that we speak with our donors and just like kind of keep them updated on a, you know, monthly, quarterly basis, the more willing that, you know, they feel like they're actually a part of the community that we have created. And that's one thing, that's one of our big values actually here at WellAware is community. Um, and so by all of the stewardship things we do, and as tedious as some of the tasks can feel, um, it's so important because it makes people feel like they're actually, I mean, they are making a difference, but they can actually see the impact of them making a difference. Um, and it, it makes people more excited to, you know, to stick around. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I'm kind of curious, uh, you mentioned that uh, you, you all are well aware, don't focus too much on giving to you, say, but it sounds like in lieu of that, you focus a lot of time on your in-person gala and that happens early December. So I'm kind of curious, how do you integrate the two? How do you integrate this year in gala with year in fundraising? Or is this gala the year in fundraising? I'm kind of curious, like how does it really work between the two since yeah, they that's, so close together? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it it's sort of two different campaigns for us when we look at marketing wise. Um, but there's a lot of really cool things at the gala that we like to debut. So for example, this gala, we are debuting a brand new mission video that we've worked with an amazing creative team to design. Um, and so that will kind of be our main our main message of our year end this year. Um, so it's, it's really surrounding um, one of our, so half of our team are Kenyan locals. And one of our team members, Mesret, she actually grew up without water. And so this whole mission video is her story. And so her story is amazing. And she's an amazing woman. Um, I could talk about her forever, but I, I won't. Um, but, you know, it's kind of how like she grew up without it. She studied hard. She got out of that cycle of poverty that was seen within her family. And now she is the engineer that is putting clean water in communities. So to kind of sum that up, that is a piece of our gala. Um, that's kind of like our mission moment, but that is really what we'll be honing our year end campaign around for those that were not in the room. Um, and then for those that were, you know, there, there will be different touches depending on the giving levels at the event, um, things like that. How do you pick which story to, to really hone in on? Because I, I'm pretty sure like impact of well aware is very wide. There's probably dozens and dozens of stories that come across. So how do you really pick and distill down to the one that you want to use and then one that you think donors would respond to? Oh gosh, Rob, that's such a hard question. Um, I mean, yeah, there, um, especially because we talk about our ripple effect and, you know, what all clean water actually impacts because it impacts so much. Um, it is, it is hard and we have, you know, we're constantly brainstorming of, you know, ways that we can get new people in the door and ways we can really like tug at the heartstrings of our, our donors and potential donors. Um, I think, so we usually come up with a new mission video for each year and it'll be a little bit different. I will say we didn't have a gala last year, but 2022, it was more around just like the overall ripple effect and what that even means. Um, and we kind of, each mission video that we create, we will, um, of course, look at the old ones and see like, you know, what do we think maybe didn't 
hit as hard as we thought it would, especially being in, in the nonprofit bubble. It's like, oh yeah, duh. But whenever, you know, you have to take a step outside of that and say, okay, somebody that has never heard of my organization, what would actually impact them? Um, so, you know, like we, we take our old, our old marketing we've done and we see like what actually was of interest, what was not. And then we kind of go from there. And because our last one was a just kind of overall story, we really wanted to hone in on an individual story. Yeah. So it sounds like you, you take kind of what you learned in the past with different stories that you're sharing, see what folks are resonating with, maybe by looking at some metrics, uh, either donations, conversions, opens, social media likes, that kind of thing. And that helps just really inform, okay, is this, is this story literally to kind of resonate? If not, then let's try something different. Let's go in a different direction. And then that's one way of distilling down to what kind of angle to use for your story. Absolutely. Yeah. And it all depends on audience too. So, you know, like who, who is our audience and what do they care about? Cause each generation cares about overall the same thing, but there are a lot of, a lot of differences between generations. So that is another big aspect as well. Yeah. So I'm going to close with one more question. So what, if you think back on um, kind of when you first started as an intern at Well Aware, so very, very, very first in the beginning, and Danny, I know you wear a lot of different hats, so so does everyone else in the team. So I'm kind of curious, what is the number one tip you have for other nonprofits today that are in a similar situation, small nonprofit, wearing a lot of different hats? What what should they be thinking about for year end fundraising this year? Um, so I have a, a more specific answer and then a more, a more general answer. Um, my more specific answer is for, for marketing specifically, um, segmenting matters and with, you know, having a small team, it's easy to kind of, you know, put that to the back of your mind because it is very tedious, but, um, it really, really does matter. My, my first, uh, year end campaign that I was a part of, we had two segments. We had our recurring donors and just our house file, just everybody else. Um, and now we have so many different more segments. Um, because like I said, you know, people want to see the humanity. And so everyone cares about a little bit of different things. So if we're able to like pinpoint that and segment people based off of what they truly care about and what they want to make an impact on, um, it really will boost overall fundraising. Um, you know, donors want to feel important. That's like one of the main things, which is obviously valid, but you know, like we, we have to show them the impact they can actually make and then follow up with that as well. And sh like, at, you know, with the results afterwards, um, second thing that's a little bit more vague is kind of goes with the, the humanity thing, but, you know, showing humanity and just meeting people where they are will, impact donations and stewardship in ways like you would not imagine. Um, so that's kind of my, my tip. <laughs> I love it. So it's focusing on uh, stewardship of your donors, but before even you think about that, it's thinking about, okay, how do I really categorize or bucket my donors into kind of the things they care about, right? Whether maybe it's based on demographic or programs they want to support or just their interests, you know, that kind of thing. But just making sure you have enough segments because each segment you will want to steward them differently and message to them differently as a way to increase the financial results that you get from each segment versus kind of this one size fits all type of story that just goes out there and doesn't really do anything. So I think if we get really specific about our audience, about our donors, we get really specific about our story and we will get really specific about how we steward those folks too. So they get have a better donor experience. Amazing. Yes. Absolutely. All right, Danny, this is incredible. I can't believe it's been, what, 20 minutes already just chatting with you? This is crazy. So thank you so much for your time. Now, if someone wants to learn more about you, Danny, or Well Aware, where should they go? Yes, absolutely. I will put the um, the website, I'll put my LinkedIn here, and then I will also put our website to learn more. Um, I would love to connect with whoever. I am a sponge. I love to learn. So I hope that everyone got something from today, um, but also I would love to learn from everyone here as well. So let's, let's connect on LinkedIn. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Danny, so much for your help today and all the insights that you're sharing. If, our, if the folks uh, that are on today, if you could just give Danny a warm, 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 thank you. Uh, maybe even share like one of the tips that, uh, that you got from her, then I think that'd be great. Danny, thanks, thanks so much for your time today. Yeah. Thanks it. for having me, Rob. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>
All right, so that was Danny Vespa from WellAware with some amazing tips. So the one thing that I learned from Danny is that you should think about who your donors are, think about the segments that you have, as well as then from there, just have a human touch when it comes to stewarding them, to nurturing them so that they can develop a really strong connection between you as well as the donor, as well as uh, the cause that you have. Amazing.